It's an election that's had the world on tenterhooks, yet there's still no clear winner, and it could come down to the smallest of margins. We could get a result almost any moment, but equally, we might have to wait days or even weeks. Donald Trump has already claimed victory for the Republicans and made allegations of electoral fraud without citing any evidence. His rival, Joe Biden, says results are moving in his favour, and he's on track for victory. Aspects of that speech uh, later in the programme. Rebecca. Now, all of this could hang on the so-called Rust Belt and a handful of key states separated by the narrowest of margins. The BBC's Clive Myrie reports now on the battle for Pennsylvania, where the counting is still going on. All very complicated, isn't it? Indeed well, it you is. You are watching the nine. We're going to bring you the rest of the day's news in a moment. But coming up later in the programme... Now then, there are tentative signs that cases of coronavirus in Scotland are decreasing. Since last Monday, the number of cases has been falling overall and, crucially, they're slowing in some of the hardest hit areas, Glasgow and Lanarkshire. But deaths are still going up. A further 50 were registered in the past 24 hours. The National Clinical Director, Professor Jason Leach, said a fall in cases would not translate into fewer deaths for another few weeks. Remember, there is usually a month-long time lag between a positive case and a patient dying. Nicola Sturgeon has said the government's considering putting a travel ban between hotspot areas into law in a bid to toughen up the new level system we're all living under. Here's our political correspondent, Lindsay Bues, with more. Right, let's have a very quick look at some of the day's other news now. And Boris Johnson has reiterated his pledge that the furlough scheme will be available in Scotland if needed after November. His minute. But before all of that, Laura is here with the day's sports stories. Hello, Laura. What a day it has been. I know. I'm going to give you a short break from US election coverage with some sports news. Thank you very much. <laughs> Good evening. Get him sell the card to himself. We just got Finn Russell back, mm -hmm. and now he's injured. No luck for Typical, him. Oh. Typical luck, exactly. And he was playing well as well. He was, yeah. And Adam Hastings, another great player that they're going to lose out on, so... Yeah, he picked Hopefully up a knock as well. Scotland's yeah, not... luck doesn't... Just when you thought you were turning a corner, but they still won. <laughs> indeed, indeed. Typical <laughs> Scottish luck, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> Right, let's go back to the main story of the day, shall we? The story that's likely to dominate the next few days, actually. This election is not quite panning out like many people had thought. We were told to expect a smooth win for Joe Biden. Instead, we're looking at states won and lost by wafer-thin margins. An ugly row over fraud allegations, lawyers are being lined up, and the splits across the United States are widening. Yeah. Here is how one well-known analyst summed things up a little while ago. These polls... Figure. Well, regardless of who wins the US election, one huge decision's already been made. America has today officially pulled out of the Paris Agreement on climate change. One place already feeling the impact of the changing climate is the Outer Hebrides, and our reporter, Ian McInnes, has been to US to hear about how coastal erosion and rising sea levels are impacting lives there. But the Hebrides looking spellbinding as ever. How's it looking where you are, though? Here's Chris Blanchett with the weather forecast. Good. OK, well, James is here for a final thought before we go. James, first of all, bring us bang up to date. Where are we at? Yeah, let's have a... Yeah, well, that's all we got time for tonight. Who knows where we'll be with all this tomorrow night, but we will be right here. The, late, the latest through the night, of course, on the BBC, but we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks very much for watching. Good night.